Actually, this is the way that I try to talk uh, all of this data that I'm here, we are here, is the whole system approach of sustainability. So, uh, like the mainstream thing uh, when we hear sustainability is it includes three uh, aspects, three pillars. Actually, we talked about this already and it's something very easy. So it includes the ecology, includes the economy, and includes also the social life. So we can say that the sustainability is just here. I need the orange. <laughs> the sustainability is here. This is the, the thing. And talking about ecology, let's say we can include nutrition or building houses or uh, energy or um, uh, what else or transportation clothing animals and no 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 so this is the ecological thing and then is the social thing that is about organization and about politics. Something else that comes in mind to your mind? Fairness. Fairness. Like fair Fairness. Fair trade. Fair trade. Justice. Justice. Uh, ethical relationships. Uh, decision making process. In generally, whatever has to do with the relationship between us. Public policy. Public policy, let me add it. And then is coming the economy, that is the most of the time in the sustainability, something is a weak point. Uh, that is about markets, is about funding. Trading. It's about trading. It's about coin. Coin system. Now it's going to be popular, like with all these coins coming up. Um, about uh, also who is giving you the funding. Like, it's about the goods. About the goods. Also. The means of production. The means of production. About the means of production. And fetish is about the goods. <laughs> means uh, like method of consumption that we talked the three hours earlier. So there are a lot of things like that. I would I would like to introduce in this scheme um, my education is on this and I would like to share with you because I think it's very important. That is the um, I will ask you some questions before before we write. The yellow, we don't say. The yellow, okay, some, can someone bring me a purple or a pink? <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what environment means? And or how you feel it? Someone would like to say? Hmm. Environment? In our culture, it feels like something separate. Yeah. Yeah. So the picture is all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isolation. Isolation from human people. Yes. It's a resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. In cycles, there's everything around us that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. So, environment is something that surrounds us. Like, as a world, we use environment a lot, but it's a way of thinking and that we are excluded. Like, we talk a lot about this. Like, my studies are about environmental sciences and environmental education. 
there is another word, word that is more inclusive and is cosmos, that actually, or world in English. So actually, this circle, the extra circle, the pink one or purple one, whatever you want to see, uh, I would call it the world view circle. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about, uh, because there are a lot of things that we didn't talk huh? so it's about spirituality, it's about religion, it's about visioning. The values. Values, visioning. It's about art, actually, also. It's about the transgenerational fairness. Um, Emotions. Thank you. If you want to add more, I can write. So it's actually, it's about imagination also. It's like... Um, It's about interconnection that is, doesn't have to do with talking, actually, but like in a level. Now, for example, we are in a very focused moment. This we can, we can consider it also as, as a vision, but as a social, social thing. So for your work in the next days, you can use this tree, but uh, you can also include a fourth circle that is about world view and visioning, because it will actually help you free yourself from your technicalities. Like, it will help you uh, imagine without really uh, trying to solve the problems of, oh, how are we going to solve the ecological? Let's imagine, like, what is going to be the ideal, and let's uh, include this in the, in the process. So, because I wanted to do it very quickly, but there are a lot of things that we can play on, we're going to do it in the next days. And because sustainability in general is one of the words that are um, infused with a lot of bad things and also with the uh, nice ones. Anyways, is a word that is like democracy, is like the people, is like uh, the color, is, is a word that is, is in general is a, a trend to be used so much. I would say it's a derived of meaning. Yeah, 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 it's like a variety, a variety, variety, variety of meaning. So, so like when we hear sustainability, let's read the next 10 pages of what is written under the... <laughs> but I just want to say that there are two big trends in sustainability, two streams actually that are not really separated, that I cannot say that are bad, but I cannot say that are good, this is up to whatever we, we consider ourselves of being. So I just want to see, and we we'll talk later in two days from now, that we have more time. Uh, the one thing is the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Uh, Uh, that actually is a list of things that the humanity has to achieve until 2030. That is about uh, finishing poverty, having sustainable cities, having sustainable education, things that are fantastic and written very nicely in the papers, but we have no idea what's going to happen practically when the war is happening right now. Who knows? And the other thing, and this is the thing that I will pass the, the word to Federico, is the EU Green Deal. These two are kind of interconnected. So, and practically, all, all the things that we do, we kind of use one of these two in the European context. Like, even, even the most radical organizations use them as mainly points of reference and communication. Um, my education also is based on this, even the, the idea is is to go far more, thinking for more generations in advance, and that's it. So I just wanted to give you a brief idea 
that when you design a project for sustainability or for social change, have these four things in mind. Also this, like, okay, economically, it's better to not buy bananas. But social, we spare the group. Ecological, there are many ideas of what is happening or what is not happening. So let's see, let's have it in mind and say, are we balanced, are we here? Are we aggressively here, but we don't take care of this? Like, for example, building an eco house from stones. How sustainable can be in ecological is this there, but in economic, it will might cost a lot. Or if not cost a lot, it will be intensive voluntary labor. So let's try to be close inside this circle. And um, actually, this is, I want to wrap up. Uh, more questions are coming. I have a tiny little bag over here. So if you want uh, to ask me more questions or if you want to have discussions, put the post it, put it inside here. Uh, it will be open also day three for Q&A. And that's it for the moment. Thank you, Madam. document uh, set uh, in, these, the, in, the Bras in the EU institutions in Brussels, you know, which are uh, top down and giving some kind of plan for how uh, we will reach uh, 2050 to, uh, to decarbonize the economy and while at the same time uh, increasing economic growth, while EU Green, uh, EU, uh, New, uh, Green New Deal is uh, as much as I know, it was started by the DM25 group, uh, and it's much more progressive. Uh, it's giving really uh, m more progressive measures, ideas, and solutions because EU Green Deal. It is a technical document, and it's really very much. Uh, um, it's technical, how to say, yeah. Uh, but while uh, while uh, uh, DM25 are pro pro uh, uh, proposing very much different measures for its term, uh, let's say in terms of uh, 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 pushing the economy uh, uh, more in line with the with the green uh, jobs and stuff like that, uh, they have concrete proposals, and I mean they have a whole list of uh, mm -hmm. uh, DM25, uh, so you can check it. Uh, and it's, is it, I'm not, is it, is a question, is it less focused on growth, which is my understanding of the... Absolutely, yes. absolutely, it's, 
It is, <coughs> it is not uh, just a document, Green New Deal by the N25, it's not just a document to uh, decarbonize the economy and, uh, and uh, make some uh, economic growth. It is more about uh, performing the society, you know, give it, giving it a more uh, social dimension uh, in the whole process. Uh, and uh, different group needs, marginalized positions, uh, uh, radical proposals, you know, like uh, massive public uh, jobs uh, in green economy, you know, like uh, based on uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, New Deal uh, in, back in the 30s in, in, in North America. So yeah, basically uh, giving an impulse to a whole, uh, whole new transformation of society, not just decarbonizing and making some economic growth. Yeah. And if I may add, it's also interesting to look at the funding. Like, about a half comes from like the EU mechanisms, and the other like a third comes from like uh, private sector, and the other third comes from the banks. So it's like, uh, you know, it's very business oriented. Like, with meaning, human relationship, like existing nature while producing plenty of food, fiber, and energy to meet local needs. This is an old stuff. I just put it here just for historical reasons. And then, da 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 Children in permaculture wait, definition. Wait, wait. Let's, give, let's give a bit of, uh, because actually it's what we said, but it really concentrates a lot of things. So they started with farms, and then they said they're consciously designed. That's why we are saying that permaculture is a design science. And then it mimics the patterns and the relationships that Exist in nature, we said that as well. And then producing plenty of food, or plenty of daily yield, fiber, yeah, fiber, and energy to meet local needs. So to meet also the needs of people and also the needs of the ecosystem. So it makes sense, no? Yeah, it makes sense. And then some simple things that you uh, permaculture is a design system that creates resilient, sustainable relationships between human beings and the rest of the natural world. Uh, these the women are established the Children in Permaculture Networks and the Capital um, is at the beginning of the book. I also put it here. And um, it's like a more draft idea of what permaculture means. There are, might be a lot of language or explanations in in the terms, resilient, does anyone know what is resilient? Okay, resilient. Okay. Uh, between human beings and the rest of the world, and, like, and the rest of the natural world, because actually it's not excluding <coughs> humans, but just connecting with the rest of the natural world, like a cosmic world you will see. Okay, like, this is a nice circle of these pictures. I don't know why we don't see it here. Okay. And yes, resources is there are five types we can say. There are like the ones that are increasing while we are using them. And can you imagine what are? Can you imagine what are? Plants too, because technically we mix it more, so you can technically expand. Yes, it can be planted. It can be example if we prune a tree correctly, if we will have like biomass that we can use in our garden, while the plant is bringing back more life by itself. So this is the way more or less to to use increase the resource values. Mm -hmm. Another idea? Like water, hmm. when you create these uh, things around the hills and you, you have greater water retention, so you can use more water while you also you water, water the soil. Water can also be affecting, so we, we cannot put it in a certain category. But, uh, yeah, it goes a bit. Goes a bit. Like, there are also some resources that are not affecting. Well, is it? No? Another thing? I'm not afraid at all. They don't really care. Sun. Sun? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can use the sun as much as we want. He doesn't really care. 
Maybe, maybe someone else here, like if we put solar panel in his garden. But the sun itself, like the energy that is coming. Uh, human resources, like human energy. If you don't use it, it's going to go. It's affected. Then the human needs to to eat up. Yeah. <laughs> we can see wind if it's properly used also. Wind, yes. Wind, wave power. Thermal, thermal water that's coming from there. If we use it just for what it gives, eh? if we don't pollute it, if we don't exploit it. Like actually, if we use it as it comes, wind is not affected at all. Sun is not affected at all. Any other ideas? Please Yeah, rivers to move around. Eh? Rivers. No. We affect it very much. Well, we can be affected. We can affect the rivers. Like yeah. we are not uh, let's say fish or uh, our aim should not should be that it should not be affected. So no, I just just at the moment just to recognize. There are just a couple of resources which are not affected while we are using them. Actually, yeah, there are not of them. Or like for example, mm -hmm. uh, except of wind or maybe sun energy. I. I cannot imagine what other can be not affected. Okay, so if we are sure that it's not affected, let's say we recommend to use it. But is it just uh, the resource is not affected? The but resource is not affected. The resource itself. But it's the self. way that we are collecting that something. Maybe affect other, other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The resource itself. The, for example, clay or soil, if you are using a natural way to process it and then you let it decide, you let it go back. It will not be affected, it will still be there. The amount of clay and soil there was, it will be after. And then there are resources that disappear or degrade if we don't use them. This is quite tricky one. Any idea? Food. Food uh, can be. Can, can it be small place? It, it goes to, to back to the earth. This is more specific, you can make the examples more into the point. It doesn't mean disappear or degrade, like it actually not like, as we were saying, food uh, that will then go back into the chain, but just disappear or degrade, like literally. I can say, like, for example, in a tree that has fruits on it, if we don't collect them, we don't let the tree bloom, okay. for example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, land, sorry, maybe land, if we are not doing jobs on land. No. It will not disappear. It will not disappear. Or not decrease. What about seeds? Seeds? Seeds. If they just seeds stay for a long time. Time unused in our <coughs> drawer, it will degrade. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did you say? Seeds. 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 Other ideas? Stone. I'm thinking if about the materials to build house with, uh, uh, sorry, you know the, the natural, three natural materials like um, beton and grass, concrete and grass, and actually not concrete, what am I saying? The grass and something else, do you Lime. know what I'm talking about? Lime. Lime? Maybe you mean sand, clay, and... Yes. It will not be affected if we use it or not. Wood will be degraded if we are not using it. For example, the wood that is already cutting and abandoned yes, over yes. there and not used, it will be degraded. So if we have wood uh, already taken from the tree, mm -hmm. we can use it as, 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 this, mm -hmm. as this kind of resource. This is a permaculture way of thinking about resources. Mm -hmm. It's a bit difficult for us mm -hmm. who are not so deep in any right. culture mm -hmm. to think about. No, just, just giving you brief ideas. So yes? Uh, is, um, stone and soil that's just sitting um, under like, the weather, that's not protected or... This, um, this is a nice idea. We, we, can, we can... Because we talk about soil now, so we... we it's a nice one. 
uh, would that also like include the uh, pre-existing kind of structure that we're abandoning because we're still left with plastic is here? Yeah. Or also like materials like metal, scrap metal that is left inside because... Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, of course. Like scrap metal, aeroplane, mm -hmm. that is big, the inside is no, no, not going to say nothing. So, and then when decreases, uh, decreases while we use them. Fossil fuels. Oh, fossil fuels. Okay. Or very, or very valuable metals in the. Earth. The metals generally, we can keep on reusing them. Like the thing is that if we let them erode. Minerals. things in the oceans, I mean fish are, and other seafood, we exploit that uh, uh, so much, mm -hmm. and so we have, and all, generally all a living uh, world, uh, now we have 60% of living beings less on the planet, I mean uh, uh, biodiversity, definitely. Uh, uh, like uh, living beings. Okay. 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 We generally use uh, so much living beings, uh, living beings like animals, plants uh, from sea and from the ground, and we uh, don't allow those uh, natural ecosystems to rebuild again mm -hmm. those living beings. So uh, the uh, uh, total number of living beings on the earth today is 60% lower than, for example, a couple of day, decades ago. Actually, can, can I say a little bit more on this? There are two things that are on this. I, I will not speak with numbers because I don't want to say something that doesn't true. But, for example, we talk about living beings as a biomass, mm -hmm. one thing, and as biodiversity. Like as, and the biodiversity during the millions of years that life exists in this world doing doing this, but have a certain it's not doing it. It's creating this pattern. At the moment, we are kind of accelerating the way down in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of biomass is getting lo lost, and a lot of biodiversity getting lost in a very set, short period of time. That is a shock, anyways. So Sorry. yes, animals. Actually, uh, I have to correct you. Uh, we increase uh, biomass because we are growing so much uh, cows, chicken, and and pigs. In that way, we. Uh, and Can you, are you sure that we increase biomass? Uh, it's equal, including people, there are more uh, breed animals and people than, for example, uh, uh, wild animals in I, the world. I think we actually decrease bioma biomass because I think we decrease we biomass. Of, um, I think we decrease yes. biomass. Like yes. very small animals that we, 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 are we decrease sanguine. biomass. We decrease the forest. We decrease the, we decrease yeah. the total biomass is getting down. Mm -hmm. Also, the biodiversity is getting down. Think of seas, for example. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Now they are so empty compared to what they used to be. Okay. Yeah. Also, big mammals, eh? And Imagine forest. dinosaurs. Imagine how many hippopotamus, elephants, mammoths can be in this planet. Eh? They are in a period of decreasing, but in generally, it were in decreasing moment. <laughs> so in generally, yes, biomass and living organisms, uh, when we use them, are decreasing. And the last one, oof, the most dangerous one, pollute or destroy other resources in case of use. Oh. All kinds of pollution, pollutants. And for example? Coal. Coal. Fertilizer. Chemical. Chemical fertilizer produced in a laboratory. Yes, yeah, actually the concentrated substances mm -hmm. that actually you should use very rarely, that we use very often. Like nu nuclear uh, garbage, uh, nuclear plants. Like, yes, this is. So, this is just a brief idea that we try to encourage all the permaculture people to use the first three categories and avoid the, the fourth one and don't use the last one. So mm -hmm. like this is the, a brief idea of how to organize your um, materials, resources, like whatever you use in your 
like practicing 